So this evening, looking at, in essence, being unconscious, competent as a trader. So something I, I talk about a lot in my uh, Trade to Trade World presentation. Um, obviously, we're going to look at it again this evening. Um, but 20 or 30 minutes, it's going to depend a lot on the interaction coming through. We've got a, a big group here this evening. But nonetheless, if you've got questions, fling them at me as and when they pop up. The way I've designed the presentation is, in essence, to go through the process a couple of times because it's 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 it, it's very simple but it's also completely abstract and I, I much prefer teaching sort of hard things where I can show you draw a line here or do this there or something like that so a little abstract so as I say if you if you if you got questions if there are points that you want to clarify if there are things you want to debate or argue or something absolutely jump in uh, let's do it we've certainly got the time <clears throat> but we're up to uh, just a quick uh, uh, overcap of, of becoming a trader in essence. What are we looking at? It's about discipline and risk management, systems, portfolio size, tools, products, assets, keeping it simple. Really what we're looking at here this evening is the psychology of it, and that very much fits into discipline. It also fits into keeping it simple, uh, and I'll talk to that point as well. But it, it, its focus really is going to be on the discipline side of the equation um, and that's how we get to that discipline with those rules and find ourselves in that ultimately in that right place what we're ultimately looking for is to become unconsciously competent and that sounds weird and i'm going to go through the various different different uh, points but what we need is where trading is absolutely just second nature to us where we we do it without thinking and inherently we think to ourselves hold on unconsciously Competent sounds you know, sounds crazy, but we do, do it all the time. Uh, we, we do it every day as we're breathing, blinking, and, and walking. Uh, we do it when driving a car, and it's a good analogy. We start off uh, unable to drive, then we can get a little bit better, and then we can sort of drive, but we need to concentrate on the driving, and then we start doing it just simply as second nature. And it's that when we get to be able to do it as second nature that we are really winning in the sense. And that's what we're trying to achieve here with our trading. So the four stages, um, and, and there's this, this thinking is credited to so many different people. I've spent the whole day Googling and trying to find who to ultimately credit it with. Um, it certainly seems to come out of the U.S. and the teaching schools in the 60s in the U.S. We start with unconscious inco incompetence. We move to conscious incompetence, conscious competence, and then ultimately that final stage, which is the unconscious competence. So let's delve into the four of them. The unconscious incompetence, in short, you are useless and you are unaware of that fact. You, you don't understand what you're trying to do. You don't know what you need. You don't recognize your lack of knowledge, your lack of ability, and you don't see any point in doing anything about it because you don't recognize the problem. And there's good news and bad news. The good news is that is nobody here. If you were unconsciously incompetent as a trader, you would not be giving up your Wednesday, sorry, your Monday evening to listen to a webcast. So you've certainly moved on from this point. You will recognize it quite simply because what you see is uh, a portfolio which pretty much just goes straight down. And if you're trading a geared instrument derivatives, um, that line there might have been your zero mark, and actually you ended up losing more than you started with. The problem is we make it too easy. You open an online share trading account, you drop yourself in 10,000 Rand, whichever product, whatever you're going to be trading, and you kind of stand back and say, yep, I'm a trader. This is great. And you start picturing the yacht you're going to have and the, the vast amount of wealth and the fun and everything that goes with it. it hasn't occurred to you, you need more than just a, a trading account in 10,000 Rand. And what you need is the skills. Like anything, you need those skills. Whether you want to be a trader, a brain surgeon, a sales rep, whatever, a plumber, you name it, you need to develop the skills. You want to be a surfer, you need to develop those skills. Same here. So, at this point, you don't you know nothing, but you're not even aware that you know nothing. So you, you you a lot of people get quite stuck here. But fortunately, in the trading space, there's something that tells us that we're a bad trader. That portfolio going to zero. And in my case, I wiped out three portfolios before we started to to do any better. Sometimes you hit zero and kind of park at that point there. 
But this kind of tells you something's not working. Something is not 100% kosher. We need to, to, to make a plan somewhere, somehow. And, and, and that's a good thing because then we move on to the next stage of the equation, which is conscious incompetence. Still useless, but aware of it. You, 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 you kind of understanding that you need to know something. You, you recognize that there's stuff that you need to get better at. You, you're not really addressing it yet. And again, I, what's your portfolio doing? Well, your portfolio might have the odd blip, but you know what? You're still going to zero, or if you're trading derivatives, you're going below that zero line. You kind of figure there's a little bit more to this. Many senses, you're going to start getting the books, you're going to start reading, you're going to start doing the courses. Um, but it, it, in most cases, yeah, it's not even a case of going and learning. It's just a case of, hmm, this is harder than I thought. And in many times, you will blame Ben Bernanke or the product or the stockbroker or whoever it might be. You go and blame somebody else in the conscious incompetence. You, you kind of know you're not very good at it, but you're not doing very much about it yet. <coughs> Excuse me. Third stage, conscious competence. You now understand, you know how to do it. You've started to demonstrate that knowledge. You've been doing the courses, you've been reading the books, you've got a, a software package, and the software package is full of indicators and oscillators, and you're making these brilliantly wonderful charts that, as I always say, make Christmas trees blush because they've got more tinsel and doilies and lines and flashing lights than your average Christmas tree. You're actually starting to demonstrate some skill, some, some, some competency. And what's the problem, though, is that it still requires serious concentration. You need to really focus on, on it. And that does a couple of things. It, it leaves room for error because what are you going to do? You're going to react. You're going to trade. And you're not always going to be able to have the space to really focus in on it. And that's going to lead to some sloppy trading, some bad trading. So what do we start to see here? Sorry, my Mac going crazy. What we start to see here is a portfolio which kind of looks a little better and then kind of, and then in essence, what are we seeing? A portfolio that really just goes sideways. So we've certainly improved. But the reason for these fall-offs, in many cases, the big, the, the, the big drawdowns that, that, that hit us, and this would be a portfolio value, what's happening here is, as I said, that time when we do things under pressure. And when we're under pressure, we simply don't have the full set of skills yet. And that then ultimately gets us to the fourth stage, unconscious competence. You've, you've practiced. You've got the skill. It becomes that second nature. You can do it without thinking. You can do it without concentrating. I know when I'm trading well because it bores me. Because it's just something I saw do. Let's go back to the driving example. When we started driving, it was, it was one of the highlights of our life. Certainly for me, it was something I desperately wanted to be able to do. I wanted a car. It wasn't just the freedom. It was more than that. It was the status. It was the adulthood and everything. And now I have a car. But really more than a car, I'd like a driver for my car so that I could read the paper or nap on the back seat or something. And yeah, maybe if you drive a Ferrari, there's still some thrill to it. But we, we've moved on from it. And we now just drive without thinking. So let's go to a, a, a graphical interface from it. And, and this comes from uh, Will Taylor, um, oddly enough, from the, the Department of Homeo Homeopathic Medicine. The point is it's a teaching tool. Uh, and he's in, in, in uh, Portland, Oregon. So... He, he drew it differently to the way a lot of people did. A lot of them do it in the blocks, the four different blocks that you've got. He said, no, hang on a second. This is not the four different blocks. So we start up in that unconscious incompetence, and, and we are naive. We, we're not even aware of what we need to know. And we start to discover, and we start to think, and we start to perhaps find stuff, and we move on to the next stage, which is our beginner's mind, where we're starting to learn that conscious incompetence. There's a lot of discouragement at that point. There's a lot that can set us off and, and, and say to us, this is not going very, very well. Um, we're finding it a lot harder than we ever anticipated it. We're finding it a lot less fun. We're not making the level of money. And in truth, I suspect most people probably give up at that conscious incompetence. We're, we're aware that we're not very good at it. We just can't get through to the next stage. 
So the next stage ultimately comes with, it's the effort, it's tutelage, it's mentorship. And mentorship doesn't necessarily mean sitting on one. It can be Twitter. It can be courses. It's about practice. It's about doing it and doing it. And that practice is ultimately going to take us to that second nature, that intuition. You see a trade, you know what to do, you execute it, you don't even think about it. And the question then is, well, how long does these stages each take? And, and there's no definitive answer. It took me, probably took me five years to get to conscious competence. I would say I spent 95 to 2000 in the unconscious incompetence and then conscious incompetence. Um, so five years to get through the first two stages. And, and, and in my defense, I'm a, I'm a bad learner. I'm a very, very bad learner. And I always jokingly say, you know what, this was the late 90s. There was no internet. There were no courses. There were very few books. There was, and, and that's not completely untrue. I mean, you know, it was a, a very, di very different time back then. I do think that if I'd had the tools available today, it might have taken me four years instead of five. My conscious competence, I think that might have taken me eight or ten years. Now, I went down a lot of wrong paths. I did a lot of other stuff around the space. I was making money trading, and I think that put me off to a degree. The reason I made money trading was simple. I'm very good at one thing, stop loss. Every time my stop loss gets hit, I exit, no questions asked. So I, I was making the money, and I don't think I fully understood the next stage. I was managing to kind of get rid of the emotion. I was managing to make the money. But I would say the unconscious competence has probably only come in the last five or six years. I noticed it in 2008 when markets were crashing, when there was panic everywhere, and I was just trading like a demon. And I don't mean necessarily making profit like a demon. I mean trading like a demon in the sense that, I was just doing the right thing. I was just seeing the trades, I was executing them, and I was moving on with zero questions asked. And ultimately, got to that last stage, that unconscious competence, that second nature, that trading without thinking. And then there's talk, and, and, and this particular gentleman, and there's a lot of talk about there being that fifth stage. That, 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 that peer review, that reflective competence where, where, where you can almost sit back in a, in a sense and watch yourself trade. You can watch yourself do it. You can really dissect what you've been doing and you can pull out the weaknesses. And the weaknesses in our trading, that your biggest enemy in your trading is nearly always you. What is it that you're doing? What are the emotions that you're feeling? What is it that's making it difficult for you to trade properly? And once we start to get those managing, then I think we're, 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 we're really uh, sort of, in a sense, on track and, 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 and really making it happen, for, for so to speak. So let's run through them again quickly. Conscious, unconscious incompetence. We know nothing. We think it's easy. And we're failing a whole bunch. We're completely and absolutely ignorant. And I think a lot of folks get stuck there, perhaps for a long time. As I said, I certainly got stuck there for a long time. We then move into conscious incompetence. We're discovering it's harder than we thought. We're learning. We're complicating. We're looking for that holy grail. There is perhaps a holy grail to trading, and that is discipline, stop loss. But we overly complicate it, and that, I think, is the secret at that stage. Then we get to conscious competence. And how do we get to this stage? I think we, we make it... Simple, simple. I think it's about simplicity. I think to get to that third stage, it's about making it simple. If we overcomplicate the process, we leave too much room for error. We leave too much room for interpretation. If you've got a graph that's got 10 different lines and Fibonacci's and six indicators and oscillators, and you're trading 70 stocks, and sometimes you trade CFDs and sometimes single stock futures, and sometimes currencies and other times indices, we, we, we're frankly making it too hard for ourselves to find that consistency, to find that groove and really make that groove work. And I think it's important to get through this stage that we, that we do it. Clinton says analysis paralysis. Clinton couldn't have said it better myself. In fact, I should have added that to the slide, analysis paralysis. And we are in an industry, the financial services industry, the stock market, where we can analyze forever. I can give you one share, any share. Pick a share. Pick any share. Big, big cap, small cap, blue chip, 
recovery, mining, local, international. I give you one share. You can spend literally the rest of your life on that share. Without a shadow of a doubt, you can. So it is about that analysis paralysis. And I think we need to narrow ourselves down. We need to narrow ourselves down in terms of what do we trade? And if you're going to trade equities, which equities? Don't try and trade hundreds. Trade a handful of them. I trade indices. I trade the Indy, Resi, Finney, and Midcap on a weekly chart. I trade the Top 40 slash Aussie Futures on a daily chart. And in truth, I trade equities in my two momentum portfolios with one trade you know, I buy at the beginning of the year and sell at the end of the year. But I've very clearly defined what I'm doing, how I do it. There's a process. There's a ritual. I sit down on my desk in the morning. My, my charting software lives on my laptop so that I can travel with it. Cup of coffee, 7.30, sit down, turn on my laptop, boot up the charting software, go check the charts. It takes me a couple of minutes. Whether I am in, in, in Johannesburg, Durban, Cape Town, Porfida, or, 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 or Paris, process is going to be the same. And then what I start to get is that conscious competence. Now that it's become such second nature, I can stop thinking. I just do it. It's like driving. It's like making lunch for the kids in the morning. It, it, the many, many things. And Look around your, your daily life. And find those things which you do unconsciously but competently. Of course, it's things like walking, breathing, blinking, driving your car. But you will find dozens of other things that you do as well. Answering the phone. I, I mean, I, I was doing an experiment and I, 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 I film, filmed myself close up on my desk to see what I'm spending my time on. And, and it, you know, the process I do and I go and I check email, Twitter, you know, uh, chat forums, uh, live prices, that sort of thing. You want to get to that point where, in essence, you've stopped thinking. You just do it. You do it because it's become so ingrained. It's become second nature. And then we get to that fifth stage, which they call conscious competence of unconscious competence, which is a mouthful and a half. What are we talking about? Getting into the zone. We hear about it, sports people, all the time. Uh, Graham Smith this last weekend in, 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 in Dubai with his uh, 200 and whatever he scored, getting into the zone. The ability to intuitively react to a new situation, and I'm going to add there and say to a situation, with an optimally accurate response. So let's look at that firstly to the, to the, to the normal situation. So you, you, what's your thing? My process. I come in in the morning, I do my charts. I see I've got a trade that, that is triggered, but it'll only confirm at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, I know exactly that routine I go through in terms of checking. Has it confirmed? Yes. What is my position size? In other words, how many contracts do I buy? It, it, it's just a process that I run through. I know exactly how to respond to the information coming to me. I do the transaction. I, I, I get into the position. I make sure the order is done. I go and update my stop losses, put them into my Google Calendar. And if a new situation arose, I would I would... Trust myself to be able to respond to it. So what's the new situation? An old situation would be a stop loss is triggered. What do I do? I know exactly what to do. I go, the stop loss triggers, I check it as my stop loss level, and I always double check my stop loss level. It triggers, I go back, I make sure I'm right both on what I've written down and on what the price is. So stop loss is triggered, I go, I exit the trade. But a new situation would be when, when you've gone miles through a stop loss. Now what do you do? The immediate response is panic. You know about stop loss. You get the 2% rule. You were supposed to lose 1,000 Rand, but you've lost three. We panic. If you're in the zone, you just react. You just know, okay, this is a bad thing. It's not the, what should have happened. But what's the optimal, accurate response? Exit the trade anyway. The losses exceeded ideal losses, but stop it losing further. Cut the position. We just respond. We don't have to stop and overthink it. So there's four stages, unconscious incompetence. How do we get from there to conscious incompetence? I think we start to realize that there's a world out there beyond our screens. As I said, everyone in this webinar this evening gets that. And the conscious incompetence, what are we doing there? It's about that, that learning. That's going to take us to that next level. We need to, to go and learn. We need to, and we're going to overdo it. We're going to go and learn every indicator and oscillator. 
We're going to learn every chart pattern, every derivative instrument. We're going to try half a dozen different brokerages. We're going to mostly learn by trial and error. We're going to mostly learn by getting burnt. And that is one of the beauties of the stock market. It gives you feedback. It gives you feedback. If, you, if you're doing bad things, and when I say getting burnt, I'm not talking about necessarily losing money. I don't measure myself by that. Wiping out a portfolio, yes, got that, agreed 100%. But what I'm really looking at actually is how am I doing in terms of discipline? How am I doing in terms of executing stop losses? Those are the sort of things I'm focusing on. The conscious competence, it's about mastering the craft. How do we master the craft? Simplicity. Absolute simplicity. And, and let's go back to, to sports people. I mean, we look at, 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 a, at, a, at a swimmer or a runner or a cricketer or a rugby player. And we look at that and we think, yo, I couldn't do that. Well, certainly I do. But for them, it's simple. They've broken it down into little bite-sized pieces. They know exactly where they need to be. They know exactly what defensive lines they're running or which balls they're ignoring or which they can hit. And it's constantly changing. Graham Smith must have faced, what, four, five hundred, maybe six hundred balls. Every one different. He's in a different place. The score's different. Different bowler. Pitches differently. Different field setting. But constantly adjusting. And how do you able to constantly adjust by simplicity. So when we get to that conscious competence, we get to the next level by making it simple, by taking our trading and making it the simplest thing ever. You know what my trading is. My, my lazy system, which is my most complicated system, has three moving averages. That's it. Three moving averages, 15, 30, and 60. My momentum portfolio has nothing but price. Simplicity. And then we get to that conscious competence. What do we got to do? Stop thinking. Do. Trust. Discipline. Consistency of action. Discipline of the mind. Do the right thing at the right time every time. You get a buy signal, you buy it. You don't say, well, I got a buy signal, but I'm worried about this or what about that? And then there's Ben Bernanke. It's about the doing. It's about trust. And it's it, it, a big part of it is trust in your system. And if you go to just one lap, you'll find a, a, a video there on, on how to trust your system. Just uh, uh, search within the website, trust, and you'll find the video on how to test a system. I think it's called uh, testing a system. The, the three-step process that you go through so that you can trust your system. Now, you have to trust your, yourself. You can't trust the market because the market's untrustworthy. You can't trust Ben Bernanke. You can't trust anything or anybody beyond your system and your ability to execute. If you're executing on a system you trust and you're executing the same with discipline, you're doing it intuitively, you're doing it without having to think, then you're going to start winning. Then you find yourself as an unconscious but competent trader and the, the net result of that a highly, highly profitable trader. So the process is those four steps. Work out where you are now. Give it a lot of thought. Go back over the video. Uh, chat to some friends if you've got trading buddies. Try and figure out which stage you, are you at right now. And then plot yourself a path. Okay, I'm at this stage. How am I going to get to the next stage? What's going to take me to that next stage? What do I need to do in my trading to get to the next stage. And then perhaps the most important part is how am I going to stay at that stage? How am I going to make sure that I don't regress and slip back? It's very easy to do. A couple of winning trades and we start to feel omnipotent. A couple of losing trades and we start to fear, feel fearful, fearful and, and, and beaten down. The one trick I do, and I mentioned it a moment ago, where I record myself, I hook up my cell phone sitting next to me, so when I do my 7.30 in the morning process, put the cell phone on a little tripod and just record what I do. And the point is that before I do the recording, the night before I write down what my expectation is, and then for a couple of days I record what I do, just to make sure that I'm doing exactly the same thing at exactly the same time. 
same process, same running through and how I do it. And critically, when I'm doing the charts, there's nothing else open. I'm on my laptop. I boot into Parallels because I run a Windows on a Mac. I open my Amy Broker, download the data. I'm not doing any other task at the same time so that I can be unconsciously competent. Uh, CBC is saying in the, in, 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 the, in, the, in the chat, he says it's boring. CBC, Sue, 100%. It's boring. I always say, if you're having fun trading, you're probably losing money. We don't, we don't want to trade for the thrill of it. Nonsense. We don't want to be a day trader. That's hard work. It's 10 hours a day staring in front of a screen, having to be on the top of your game for the entire 10 hours. We want the market to be a personal ATM. We want freedom from ties that bind. We want to be able to do what we want. We want to do our job because we wake up in the morning and look forward to it. And if we wake up one morning and do not look forward to it, we phone the boss and say, I'm not coming in today. And when they say, how about tomorrow? We'll say, you know what? I'll let you know tomorrow. The trading is not where we get our thrills. So I think it's important that becoming a trader comes to, takes time. The, the, some of the, core, this is the basic skills. Learning some 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 uh, 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 products easy enough. Opening an account easy enough. Um, getting some rudimentary technical analysis easy enough. Designing a trading system. The challenge with that is, I'm going to say to you, you can do anything you want, and and we find that overwhelming. We would rather have a trading system given to us, but then of course we can't trust it. So it's about learning to trust that trading system. Keep the system simple. Find another, go into just one lap, download the systems. There's a couple from me, there's a couple from Elwin Berger and Warren Peacock. None of them are rocket science. Find those trading systems, test them so you can trust them, and then stop overthinking. Do and trust. Trust your system, trust yourself. That's what's critically important. Ladies and gents, if you've got questions, I'm bumping up against the half past eight time limit, uh, but certainly if you've got questions, I, 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 I appreciate it's a, a, it's a very theoretical process. It's, it's not something you know, that, that's just bang simple. There's a lot of theory behind it, a very theoretical, but it's critically important that we can get our head into that right space, that we can make ourselves uh, 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 really do it. Uh, Duncan, you're saying um, plan your trade, trade your plan, 100%. It's about have that plan in place, trade that plan, and once we've done it repeatedly, we, let's go back to sports, muscle memory. If, if you do a sport, well, I, I like to call myself a surfer. Let's be honest, I don't get anywhere near a surfboard or very the sea very often. I live in Joburg for a start. But every time I go, I'm exhausted in like the first 12 minutes. But I know that if I go to the beach over the December holidays and I go for about three or four weeks, the first couple of days are rough. But then what happens? Muscle memory. What we're doing here is muscle memory, but the muscle we're using is our brain. That's what we need to focus on. We need to get that muscle memory working. Uh, Simon is 30 to 45 minutes looking at weekly or daily charts enough to be successful. Uh, Melvin, uh, Melvin, great question. Um, can you do it in 30 to 45 minutes? Yes. I would say that my trading, it takes me about three minutes in the morning. Let's be generous. Let's say it takes five minutes in the morning. Um, so that's 25 minutes a day. Let's say I get uh, I get a couple of trades maybe. I mean, I don't in truth get a couple of trades. I'm probably spending, I'm probably spending less than that. But could you do it on 30 to 45 minutes a week? Absolutely. Of course, if you're day trading, no. But I do, remember, I do weekly and daily. So I've only got one chart I'm looking at it on a daily basis. I've got four charts I'm looking at on a weekly basis. And it's literally taking a couple of minutes in the morning or the evening to look at the chart. I don't do evening because my data arrives at 8, so I do it early morning. And then a couple of minutes to execute the trade later that afternoon if it confirms. So Melvin, you're 100% on the right track. You want to spend less time to give you time to spend time on what's really important. Family, surfing, those sort of things. Uh, even just to want to mention competence equals skill plus knowledge plus attitude. That's a great point. Um, it's the skill. Let's do it in the middle sense. It's knowledge. Knowledge is critically important. It's developing those skills. It's about attitude as well. And attitude is, is you know, 
it, it goes so far as things such as affirmations, but it also goes to the point of, of not getting beaten up. It goes to the point of, 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 of competency and belief. And that belief comes, belief in your system, trust in your system, belief and trust in yourself. Uh, is your main trade, Duncan's asking, is your main trade just Aussie? Duncan, I trade Aussie on uh, end of day chart. Lazy, I, it's called my Lazy Aussie system. If you go to the website, search for Lazy, you'll see an Aussie and then another one. The Aussie one is a, a chart top 40. I trade Aussie futures on an end of day basis. And then I chart the other four indices, uh, Indy, Finney, Resi, Mid Cap. I chart those on a weekly basis and I trade them with the Excuse me, trade them with ETFs. Uh, Graham is a stock market, i.e. investing and trading my sole source of income. Uh, Graham, it's not. I'm at the position where I could probably live off it. I might, my quality of wine might drop. At, at the moment, my main source of income is work for Standard Bank, uh, work for Just One Lap, work for uh, Finweek, um, JSC, and there's another one out there, um, uh, Business Day TV. Um, and at the moment, my, my revenue from investing and trading, from my investing money goes back into investing. My trading profits goes into investing and then toys, buying, uh, I've got an LP collection. I want to go buy some vinyl and stuff like that. So am I, am I living off my, my, my investing and trading? No, I'm not. Could I live off it? I could. Uh, if I had a rough spot, I probably could. I, I, I don't know how I would like the stress of it, but I certainly could do it. At the moment, it's supplementary. Stefan, do you have any good tutorials on basics of collecting data and creating charts for beginners? How to work out the averages you use in your lazy system? Um, Stefan, I mean, the, 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 a couple of places. One is incrediblecharts.com.au. I think it's .com.au, Australian website. A lot of information there. Um, I know uh, that, that a, a bunch of, of brokers have got a lot of content there. And we will be doing a lot more in the new year in terms of tutorials on, on, on exactly what you're talking out here, those averages and the like. Um, in terms of how to work out averages and stuff, I, I'm not quite sure what you mean there. I'm using Ami Broker, so I just tell Ami Broker, show me this, and it sort of happens. Uh, Quezzy is asking, ideally, what's a good amount to start with as a novice trader? Great question. Always a terrible answer. I'm going to tell you the ideal amount. Hundred thousand. Don't 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 turn off your computer and run away because that's the crazy answer. I'll give you the more sane one. Garth McKenzie says fifty. Honest answer, probably around twenty to thirty thousand um, is going to make the best way to start trading. And I know that massively discourages people. So here's the point. How's the best way we learn? We learn by this listening. We learn by courses. We learn by reading books. We learn by watching. In truth, we learn best by doing, by getting our hands dirty. So if you're starting with a much smaller amount, and, and you could maybe get away with five or ten thousand rand, I certainly wouldn't try less than five. If you can get if you can get yourself to five thousand rand, trade with discipline, put everything in place. The trading process, even though I think it's too small an amount to ideally trade with, the point being is you're going to learn an infinitely large amount more by doing. So 100,000 is ideal. I'm going to say that you can probably get away with five to really, really uh, do better. Clinton says 100 improves the odds. The point with 100,000, Clinton, you're 100% right, because you can do solid risk management. I risk 1% of my portfolio in any one trade, which means that I'm taking tiny risks in terms of rand terms per trade that I do. Sometimes it slips and I end up losing 1.5 or 2%. Not often probably not even once a year, but it gives me that space. If you want 5,000 Rand, you can't run you know, 1% risk management. You've got to run 5 or 6%. Couple of losing trades in a row, bang, you're wiped out. Bevan, low on funds, marry rich. That is what I, <laughs> what I always say. If you want to get rich in a hurry, marry money, you say low on funds, marry money. Yep, that works as well. Um, Andre, can you apply the same system mindset to shares and Aussie futures? Andre, yes. Short answer, you can. There's one key difference between them. Shares are more volatile by their very nature. We, we, I mean, look at ABLE over the course of this year. Being up at 40, being down at 14. Um, that's an extreme example, but... 
for a stock to move three or four percent. And last week we had a couple of retailers moving, you know, six or seven or eight percent in a day. That's that happens with an individual stock. With a index, that is significantly less likely. A two or three percent move up or down for an index is huge. And that's why I trade indices less volatile. It means I get shaken out less. It means I miss my stops less. So broadly the same, but expect a lot more volatility. Charmaine, always absolutely a pleasure. Uh, Clinton, yep, you stay in the market longer, 100%. Helene, uh, really appreciate. Thank you very much. Um, what return can one expect? So what return can you expect from trading? Well, Ooh, I mean, this is how long is a piece of string. If you look at Garth McKenzie, Trader's Corner on Business Day TV, he's in his second year where he's going to do around 50%. That is an astonishingly brilliant return. My target for trading, ideally 36% per year, doubles my money every two years. If you're starting off, that seems quite small. But double your money every two years, keep going over the next 10, 20 years, it becomes massively significant. So I'm looking for those mid-30s. My longer-term average, and it depends which system, and there's been some tweaks, but my longer-term average is sitting at around 35%. I haven't crunched numbers for this year, although broadly I'm having a, a fairly decent year in 2013. My lazy system is, is printing money fairly well at the moment. And there's still another six weeks of trading. Um, I would aim for 30 odd percent. I know it's not going to shoot the lights out and make us rich in a hurry, but it's, it can give that consistency. If we're trying to shoot the lights out, we'd go high risk and then it's really going to hurt. Um, can intraday Aussie really be done unconsciously and competently with stop loss and correct setups? I think it can. And I speak slightly from experience. I traded Aussie in five and 15 minute charts uh, seven or eight years ago, um, and I did well. I, I, I lived off it. Um, it was my, at that point, my, my, my primary uh, revenue source. Um, and, and certainly it's how I was doing it, although I, was, I became better as a trader a couple of years thereafter. But there are other traders out there I know, and I've interviewed a couple of them for the book I'm currently doing, um, who are in that space. Uh, in the intraday space, it becomes a lot harder because you've got to get rid of the distractions, and therefore it's just you and market. And the problem with distractions is that even if just having a TV on and you watch the TV and you watch an advert, you miss an entry. Uh, you go check your email, you go check Twitter, you miss an entry. So really, you want absolutely nothing. So it's a lot harder staying in the zone. And it's, I suppose it's the, the equivalent of, of Graham Smith scoring 200-odd runs as opposed to Umla in the previous test just doing 118. Both impressive, but the 200-odd is, is more than double impressive. Uh, Quezer, absolutely pleasure, always a pleasure. Andre, oh, Andre, I deleted your question. Sorry, you're asking about Easy Trader, and I'm assuming you're going to say when's it going to be fixed. Uh, short answer, I'm not sure. I know there is a plan underfoot. I don't have an ETA for that. Um, suggested books, uh, best book, and I'll type it in here Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. And he actually has a new book coming out, um, which I think is due in the new year, uh, which will be a follow-up from that. Trading in the Zone, Mark Douglas. Uh, you should all have got it in your, in your GoToWebinar app. By far the best. Melvin, absolute pleasure. Always a pleasure. Um, Stefan, my best performing portfolio. Uh, <laughs> great question. I, over, over time, the, on, on average, my end of day top 40 lazy, which trades all Z futures. When that thing hits pay dirt, I, I, I got into a trade last year where I made in about, I made, I forget the exact number. I increased the value of that portfolio 58% in a three and a half month trade. Um, so when that portfolio hits pay dirt, it, it, it's absolutely the, the biggest winner, but it's a little more volatile. It has years which are way under. My momentums are broadly more consistent but it is the uh lazy and it will be the top 40 trading aussie 
Clinton, best chair to start with. Um, great question. What's the best chair? I'm not going to say there's a best chair, but your second half is what process should one follow to select a share? Start with the top 40. You only want to trade shares in the top 40, so start with the top 40. Divide it up into five different sectors. So you've got financials, you've got uh, mining stocks, you've got uh, retailers, you've got uh, diversified industrials, um, or industri sort of industrials, and then you've got perhaps your, your, your uh, uh, medical and the like. And from each of those, pick one share. That then gives you five shares that you trade and start to learn the shares. Look at the charts every single day, back test on what you've been doing with them. Why the top 40? High liquid, make a mistake, it's not going to hurt too much. They're giving you movements. We've got top 40 shares this year that are up 30, 40, 50, oh, no, that's past, 60, 70, 80%. So there's money to be made there. Um, don't pick two banks, don't pick two miners. They're the same, pick one miner, one bank, uh, pick one TMT. Tech Media Telecommunications, uh, pick one industrial, uh, pick, so you've got five stocks with it there. Andre, uh, always a pleasure, absolutely. Uh, ladies and gents, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, my time is up against me. Um, we're going to continue with the series. I'm broadly going with the, the theme of, of how do we become a successful trader. If there's particular things that you want me to hit next, um, and we will get at least another two in this year, one for November, one for December, uh, drop me an email, simon at justonelap.com, or just go to justonelap.com and you'll find the links there. Uh, send me an email, what you want to do next. Um, I'm probably looking at risk management. Maybe I'm looking at... Uh, uh, Put into, I'm, I'm not sure. I've got some ideas. But you guys drive the process. If there's stuff that you're particularly interested in, uh, let me know and uh, we can cover that next. Uh, William, Stefan, Clinton, Chat, everyone else who sent in the thanks. Uh, really appreciate your time this evening. Ladies and gents, I hope you had fun and uh, we'll chat again. All the best. Cheers.